Hello, and welcome to the Financial Modeling for Mining course. In this first lesson, we'll review some of the distinctive features related to mining projects. The life cycle of a mining project starts with exploration. During the exploration stage, we carry out the ground evaluation and exploration drilling, and the objective of this stage is to discover a mineral deposit and to come up with the mineral resource estimate. The exploration stage lasts anywhere from 5 to 15 years. And once we've defined the mineral resources, the next stage is development. During the development stage, we carry out the planning and permitting activities. We carry out economic and technical studies, and we construct the mine and the necessary infrastructure. The development stage lasts anywhere from two to five years, depending on how complex the mining project is. Once we build the necessary infrastructure and construct the mine, we then start production. So, during the production stage, we mine the ore, we produce the metal, and we carry out the waste management. Usually, the production stage of a mining project lasts more than 10 years. The resources that mining projects discover are always finite. So, once we extract all of the resources of the project, we have to close the mine. During the closure period, we carry out the site rehabilitation activities and environmental monitoring. The initial closure period lasts up to three years, which is usually followed by environmental monitoring, which can last up to 50 years. Having discussed the life cycle of the mining project, let's now review the technical reports that the mining project produces during its life cycle. During the exploration period, the objective is to discover and calculate the resources that the project got. The resource estimate will be produced by independent consultants, based on the exploration work and the drilling results. The resource estimate will give us the amount of resource and the confidence level of the estimate. Once the resource estimate is done, then, typically, a scoping study will be performed again by independent consultants. A scoping study shall give us a rough idea about the economics of the project based on the resources that we have estimated. We said rough idea because there will be a high uncertainty with regards to the capital and operating costs of the project. Once the scoping study is done and the management of the project is satisfied with the results, the next stage is to carry out the preliminary economic assessment. During the preliminary economic assessment, we further reduce the uncertainty with regard to the capital and operating costs. The level of uncertainty in the preliminary economic assessment is plus minus 50%. If the management is satisfied with the work accomplished during the exploration stage, the next stage is project development. And during the development stage, we want to reduce the uncertainty with regards to the capital and operating costs. And this is typically done in the pre-feasibility study, where we reduce the uncertainty to plus minus 30% with regards to the capital and operating cost. We will further refine the production plans related to the mining project in the pre-feasibility study, thus further reducing the uncertainty of the project. The pre-feasibility study is followed by the feasibility study, where we reduce the uncertainty with regards to the capital and operating costs to plus minus 15%. The result of the feasibility study will be the reserve estimate. In other words, in the feasibility study, we prove that the resources of the project can be economically and technically extracted. Hence we convert the resources into reserves. When the project is in production, we still have to produce technical reports, and these reports will relate to the technical updates of the project. And more importantly, since we will be mining the reserves of the project, we have to update the reserve estimates. And finally, during the closure stage, the project will produce rehabilitation and monitoring reports that will be submitted to the relevant authorities. All mining projects are exposed to commodity price volatility, which increases the riskiness of the mining industry. Here, in this chart, we've got the gold prices since 1973, and you can see how volatile the gold price is. For example, in the year 1979, the gold price reached roughly $800 per ounce, and that was an almost fourfold increase from the price that we got in 1973. Next, the gold price went down to roughly $500 per ounce in the year 2000 and then it went up to more than 1800 per ounce in the year 2011. The gold price hit 2067 per ounce in August 2020 during the COVID-19 crisis. So, you can see how volatile the gold price is. And this means a lot of uncertainty with regards to the revenue of the mining companies. Another distinctive feature of the mining industry is its high capital intensity. We already saw that significant funds have to be spent on the exploration and this is before we know whether we've got the project or not. Next, 
there are significant economies of scale in mining projects, as we will see later on in the course. Economies of scale mean that we have to mine and process a large amount of rock, which will require large equipment, and therefore, large capital investment into that equipment. Furthermore, the mining projects are typically located in remote areas. Therefore, roads, railways, and townships usually have to be built, and this means more money needs to be spent on the project. The critical component of any mining project is power and water. We have to bring power and water to the site. Again, this means that we have to spend more money on the project. Let's now review the key terms related to the mining projects that we will be using often during this course. Ore is a rock from which the metal or mineral can be profitably extracted. The grade is the amount of metal per ton of ore. When it comes to precious metals, we measure the grade in grams per ton. So we can say the grade of the ore is 1 gram per ton gold or 10 grams per ton silver. Base metals such as copper and zinc are measured in percentage. Next is metal recovery which indicates the percentage of the metal that can be recovered from the ore. Typically, we can recover up to 95% of the metal from the ore. Obviously, this depends on the metal and the recovery method used. Processing is the removal and separation of waste from valuable metal. The processing is a method that almost all the mining projects employ to produce either pure metal or concentrate. And the concentrate is a processed ore, where a significant amount of waste has been removed. The concentrate is a product that we can sell to the customer. Typically, we sell the concentrate to the smelter if we've got a direct relationship with the smelter, or we can sell it to a merchant trader. Finally, metal payability refers to the smelter terms for the purchase of concentrate. The metal payability indicates the discount that we have to give either to the merchant trader or the smelter when they purchase the metal from us in the form of concentrate. 